Philosophical questions. Now these questions may cause you to rethink everything in your life, or maybe you find the questions beautiful and introspective and allow you to think about the world around you. Whether you think these questions are scary or cool, we're going to cover it in this iceberg. Now I know this is a more niche topic and niche video and as a whole, but since my existential crisis video and philosophy video did so well, I decided to merge the two into this new iceberg, which covers both sides of philosophy and existential crisis prompting questions. Personally, this is one of my favorite icebergs I've ever covered and researched, so let's just get into it. And actually, before we dive into it, consider subscribing to the channel. It's my goal to be at 100,000 subs before the end of the year, and I really think we can do it. It's free, and you can always change your mind. So, why not join the community? Anyways, since that's out of the way, let's actually get into the video. Alright, getting straight into the iceberg, starting off with tier 1 and the first entry being theism. Theism is a philosophical or religious belief in the existence of one or more gods or deities. It is the opposite of atheism, which is the absence or rejection of belief in the existence of gods. Theism can take various forms, including monotheism, which asserts the existence of a single, supreme deity, and polytheism, which acknowledges the existence of multiple gods. Within theism, there are also different perspectives on the nature of the divine, the relationship between humans and the divine, and the role of religion in people's lives. Theistic beliefs can be found in many different world religions, such as Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and Hinduism, among others. Your Significance The question of one's significance is a profound and timeless question that has captivated the minds of thinkers throughout all of history. The exploration of this question spans various philosophical traditions each offering unique perspectives on the nature of human existence, such as existentialism, as championed by thinkers like John Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, delves into the individual's struggle to find meaning and significance in a world that may appear indifferent or absurd, emphasizing individual freedom and responsibility. Existentialism posits that individuals must actively create their own meaning. Albert Camus further contributes to this discourse through absurdism, addressing the inherent meaningless and absurdity of life. The conflict arises from humanity's pursuit of meaning in a seemingly indifferent universe. Camus suggests embracing the absurd, advocating for a life lived with integrity despite the inherent lack of inherent meaning. In contrast, humanist philosophies, including secular humanism, celebrate the inherent dignity and worth of individuals. Humanists find significance in human experiences, relationships, and their pursuit of knowledge, ethics, and personal development. Religious perspectives provide diverse answers to questions of human significance. In Christianity, for instance, significance is often found in the relationship with God, adherence to religious teachings, and the belief in an afterlife. Nihilism, in its various forms, takes a more skeptical view, suggesting that life lacks inherent meaning and no meaning at all. Some nihilistic perspectives argue that individuals must actively create their own meaning and values in the absence of any predetermined purpose. Eastern philosophies such as Buddhism or Taoism offer alternative perspectives on existence. Buddhism addresses the issue of suffering and proposes that pursuit of enlightenment as a means to transcend the cycle of birth and death. Ultimately, the question of significance is deeply personal, with individuals finding meaning through a combination of personal experiences, relationships, philosophical insights, and cultural or religious frameworks, but it really goes down to your own choice and your own meaning with really no true answer. Atheism Atheism at its core represents the absence of belief in the existence of deities or gods. Individuals who identify as atheists may do so for various different reasons, ranging from reliance on empirical evidence and scientific reasoning to a general skepticism regarding religious claims. The spectrum of atheism includes both weak or implicit atheism, where individuals simply lack belief in gods without actively denying their existence and strong or explicit atheism, which involves a positive assertion that God does not exist at all. Many atheists also adopt an agnostic stance, acknowledging the unknown or unknowable nature of the existence of such deities. Atheism is not a monotheistic belief system, rather it encompasses a diverse range of perspectives on mortality, purpose, and the nature of existence. While atheism addresses the question of belief in gods, individuals who identify as atheists may hold a variety of different views on other aspects of life, drawing on secular, humanistic, or philosophical principles. 
Mortality. Mortality refers to the state of being mortal or subject to death. It is a fundamental aspect of the human condition and most conditions on the world where nothing lives forever. And the awareness of mortality has been a central theme in philosophy, literature, and religion throughout history. The concept of mortality raises profound questions about the nature of life, the meaning of existence, and the inevitability of death. Different cultures and belief systems offer diverse perspectives on mortality, ranging from religious notions of an afterlife to philosophical contemplations of the imperatives of life. In existential philosophy, the awareness of one's mortality is often seen as a driving force in shaping individual choices and giving meaning to life. Existential thinkers like John Paul Sartre argue that the acknowledgement of our finite existence prompts us to confront the responsibility of creating our own meaning and values in a world without inherent purpose like we kind of covered earlier. Cultural attitudes toward mortality also influence societal norms, rituals, and approaches to grief and loss. Various religions traditionals provide frameworks for understanding and coping with mortality, offering beliefs about an afterlife or reincarnation. Size of the World The philosophical question surrounding the size of the world is pretty unique and a weird question, so I'll try my best to explain it. From a subjective standpoint, it delves into the individual's experience, questioning the nature of perception and consciousness. Philosophers may explore the limits of human understanding and grapple with the inherent subjectivity of one's perspective in attempting to comprehend the vastness or limitations of the world. Epistemology, the question leads to considerations about knowledge and reality. Discussions may revolve around how humans acquire knowledge, the potential limitations of our understanding, and whether certain aspects of reality remain beyond our grasp. This line of inquiry touches on fundamental issues related to truth, belief, and the pursuit of knowledge. Existentially, the size of the world takes on significance as philosophers contemplate the individual's place within the broader context of existence. Drawing from existential thought, these inquiries may involve reflections on the meaning and purpose of human existence in the face of the vastness of the world. Metaphorically, the concept of the world's size becomes a symbol for the richness of possibilities, perspectives, and experiences. Philosophers may use this metaphor to explore themes of cultural diversity, moral relativism, and the multifaceted nature of human existence. Expanding the question to a cosmic perspective, philosophers may contemplate humanity's place in the entire universe, exploring the potential for extraterrestrial your life and confronting the existential implications of cosmic insignificance or grandeur. In essence, the philosophical exploration of the quote size of the world serves as a gateway to deeper inquiries about perception, knowledge, meaning, and the fundamental nature of reality. So in reality, this question is really big and really deep, but I tried to just explain every way of looking at the question. Sonder Sonder is a term that was coined by the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. Sonder is not a traditional English word found in dictionaries, but has gained popularity due to its poetic and relatable nature. Sonder is defined as the realization that each passerby has a life as vivid and complex as your own, with their own ambitions, friends, routines, and worries. It's the awareness that every person you encounter is living a life that is just intricate and meaningful as yours, and that your story is just a small part of a much larger narrative involving countless other individuals. This concept encourages a sense of empathy and connection with the people around us, highlighting the richness and diversity of all human experiences, and it prompts us to consider the depth of each person's existence and how it's as deep as yours and I's. Mandela Effect The Mandela Effect is a phenomenon in which a group of people collectively misremember or recall events, facts, or details in a way that is different from the historical record or how reality sets it. It is named after Nelson Mandela, the former South American president, whose death in 2013 led some individuals to express surprise, claiming they remembered him dying in prison in the 1980s. The Mandela Effect is often discussed in the context of popular culture and shared memories. Examples include people misremembering the spelling of a brand name, lyrics to a song, or the details of a movie scene. Some attribute these discrepancies to alternate realities, parallel universes, or changes in the fabric of space-time. However, from a psychological perspective, the Mandela Effect is often explained by memory errors, social reformment, or false memories, and the malleability of human recollection. Consciousness. The philosophical exploration of conscious delves into the intricacies of human morality 
presenting a multifaceted concept that varies across ethical traditions and cultural perspectives, often conceived as inner moral compass, conscious guides individuals in discerning right from wrong. Immanuel Kant, within a deontological framework, ties conscious to resonant moral duties, which consequential perspectives focus on outcomes. Cultural and religious beliefs further shape the understanding of conscious. In Catholicism, it is seen as a voice of God within. From a psychological standpoint, Lawrence Kohlberg's stages of moral development shed light on the formation of conscious. So basically, to wrap that up in a more understandable concept, conscious just decides right and wrong in almost your just moral compass and how you perceive the world, but it really is different for everyone, and we'll get into more ethics down below in the iceberg. Afterlife. The notion of the afterlife, deeply rooted in mostly religious, philosophical, and cultural traditions, offers diverse different perspectives on what may transpire beyond physical death. Within religious frameworks such as Christianity and Islam, the afterlife is often characterized by concepts of heaven, hell, and divine judgment based on earthly deeds. Whether you do right or wrong, you'll go to heaven for doing good deeds, and for wrong deeds, you'll go to hell. Hinduism and Buddhism introduced the cynical notions of reincarnation and karma, suggesting that soul undergoes multiple lifetimes. Secular perspectives on the afterlife can range from agnosticism or atheism, positing that consciousness ceases upon death, to secular humanism, which underscores the significance of the present life and the impact individuals can make during their time on earth. Philosophers engage with the idea of an afterlife, exploring its implications on morality, justice, and existential meaning. Alright, now on to Tier 2, starting off with the trolley problem. The trolley problem is a thought experiment in ethics and moral philosophy that explores the moral dilemma of making difficult choices in situations where lives are at stake. It was first introduced by British philosopher Philippa Foote in 1967 and later popularized by Judith Jarvis Thompson. The scenario typically involves a runaway trolley heading towards a group of people who will be seriously harmed or killed if it continues on its path. The individual faces the dilemma must decide whether to take action to divert the trolley onto another track where it may harm or kill one person instead of the larger group. And there are also variations of the trolley problem that introduce different factors, such as the fat man variant, where an individual must physically intervene by pushing a large person onto the track to stop the trolley. The goal is to explore the ethical principles and moral reasoning individuals use to make life and death decisions. The trolley problem has been widely discussed in the fields of ethics, psychology, and artificial intelligence. It raises questions about moral implications of actions, the value of individual lives, the concept of utilitarianism, and the deontological perspective. The various different responses to the trolley problem highlight the complexity and subjectivity of moral decision making, with no universally agreed upon solution. Deontology versus Consequentialism represent two major ethical frameworks, each offering a distinct approach to moral decision making. Deontology, associated with Immanuel Kant, places emphasis on adhering to moral rules and duties, considering certain actions as inherently right or inherently wrong irrespective of their consequences. This approach upholds universal principles, such as honesty or justice, and is rooted in Kant's categorical imperative, which advocates for actions that can be universally applied without contradiction. In deontological ethics, the morality of an action is determined by the nature of the action itself and the principles guiding it. Consequentialism, on the other hand, shifts the focus from inherent principles to the outcomes or consequences of an action, notably associated with utilitarianism. Consequentialism, as advocated by thinkers like Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill, contends that morality of an action is determined by the overall good or happiness it produces. The utility principle, a core tenet of utilitarianism, encourages actions that maximize positive outcomes or minimize negative ones. Consequentialist reasoning is fundamentally concerned with the impact and results of an action or the well-being of individuals and society. These two ethical frameworks diverge in their considerations of rules versus outcomes, the absoluteness of principles, and the importance of intent versus results. 
Deontology offers a rule-based, principled approach, while consequentialism prioritizes the consequences of an action, allowing for flexibility based on the specific context. The ongoing philosophical discourse surrounding deontology and consequentialism reflects the complexity of ethical decision-making and how everyone in the world has some sort of different ethical framework and it's really hard for to put a societal expectation to everyone, even though everyone basically has a moral compass that's different from each other's. Pessimism. Pessimism, both as a philosophical outlook and a psychological disposition, encompasses a pervasive, negative view of life and events. Philosophical figures like Arthur Schopenhauer and, to a certain extent, Friedrich Nietzsche delved into the depths of pessimistic themes, with Schopenhauer emphasizing the inherent suffering in life and Nietzsche grappling with the complexities of human existence. In psychology, pessimism is often understood as a cognitive bias that influences how individuals perceive and interpret circumstances, leading to thought patterns characterized by expecting unfavorable outcomes or assuming the worst case scenario. Beyond the individual level, pessimism can manifest as a cultural and social critique, expressing skepticism about social progress, institutions, or the overall human condition. This broader perspective on pessimism may be shaped by historical events, political disillusionment, or concerns about the trajectory of the future. Apocalypse. And this entry actually is kind of a foreshadow for my next video, which will be the apocalypse iceberg, little spoil, but stay tuned for that one. And let's just get into the entry. The contemplation of the apocalypse gives rise to a multitude of different philosophical inquiries that span existential, ethical, and metaphysical dimensions. At an existential level, individuals may grapple with the profound question of life meaning and the shadow of potential annihilation. The fear of an apocalypse makes us think about human freedom and responsibility. Existentialist views emphasize our personal choices when faced with impending doom. Ethical dilemmas also arise, questioning how morals guide decisions in scarcity and survival. Balancing self-preservation with ethical duties becomes a complex moral calculation. Considering human impact on apocalyptic scenarios raises ethical concerns about our responsibility to the planet and future generations. Philosophically, we wonder if apocalypses mean ending or transformative moments. Theological traditions link apocalyptic themes to divine justice, human destiny, and existentialist purpose. Societally, we examine how people and communities respond to existential threats, revealing whether crises bring out the best or worst in us. Exploring the stability of social contracts and ethical systems under pressure highlights foundational values and ethics that persist or crumble in apocalyptic scenarios. Psychological hedonism, a theory within moral psychology, posits that human actions are fundamentally driven by their pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain. According to this perspective, every decision or behavior can be traced back to an underlying motivation for personal satisfaction or the reduction of personal discomfort. This notion extends beyond physical pleasure to include emotional, intellectual, and psychological well-being. Proponents of psychological hedonism argue that even seemingly altruistic actions can be understood as rooted in the desire for personal fulfillment. Acts of kindness or generosity, according to this view, may bring individuals a sense of pleasure or satisfaction, revealing an underlying hedonistic motivation. However, psychological hedonism has faced criticism for oversimplifying the complex motivations beyond human behavior. Critics condemn that it neglects factors such as empathy, moral values, and social obligations, and that it fails to account for behaviors that appear to involve self-sacrifice for the benefit of others. Nihilism versus Existentialism Two prominent philosophical perspectives offer divergent responses to fundamental questions about meaning, purpose, and the nature of existence. Nihilism, epitomized by Friedrich Nietzsche's proclamation that God is dead, asserts a fundamental lack of inherent meaning or value in life. It contends that traditional beliefs, moral systems, and societal structures are devoid of objective significance, leaving a void in the face of seemingly indifferent universe. Existential nihilism, a subset of nihilism, takes this further by denying any predetermined meaning or purpose, emphasizing the need for individuals to confront life's absurd nature and construct their own meaning. In contrast, existentialism places a strong emphasis on the individual's experience and agency. Thinkers like John Paul Sartre and Albert Camus 
key figures in existentialist thought delve into themes of existential angst, freedom, and the search for meaning in life. Existentialism acknowledges the absence of inherent meaning, but encourages individuals to actively engage with their existence. The famous existentialist principle, existence precedes essence, underscores the idea that individuals define themselves through their actions and choices. The existentialist perspective fosters a sense of personal responsibility and advocates for living authentically, making choices in full awareness of one's freedom. While nihilism tends to lead to a sense of despair and rejection of traditional values, existentialism embraces embraces the challenges of existence, urging individuals to actively participate in the ongoing process of self-creation. In essence, while both perspectives grapple with questions of meaning, nihilism emphasizes the absence of intrinsic meaning, while existentialism focuses on the individual's role in creating meaning through conscious engagement with life. Fermi Paradox The Fermi Paradox, named after physicist Enrico Fermi, presents a perplexing contradiction. The high probability of extraterrestrial civilizations existing in the vast cosmos, yet the lack of observable evidence or contact with such civilizations. This paradox emerges from the sheer number of stars similar to the Sun in our galaxy, many of which likely host Earth-like planets. In the conditions for life are widespread, why haven't we detected signals of other intelligent civilizations? Various proposed solutions aim to address the Fermi paradox. The rare Earth hypothesis suggests that the necessary conditions for complex life and intelligent civilizations are very uncommon, making the emergence of intelligent life a very rare event. Factors like a stable planetary environment and specific events in the planet's history may be very crucial and infrequent. The concept of the Great Filter also suggests a hypothetical obstacle or set of obstacles that significantly reduce the probability of a civilization progressing to the point of interstellar communication. This could be a challenging step in the development of intelligent life that many civilizations fail to overcome. Another explanation possesses technological self-destruction, suggesting that advanced civilizations may face existential threats from technological misuse, environmental degradation, or conflicts, leading to their decline or extinction before reaching interstellar capabilities. The transession hypothesis proposes that advanced civilizations may tradition into digital or post-biological forms, making them less detectable using our current observational methods. This implies that advanced civilizations might exist, but operate in ways that that are not easily observable through traditional means. The Fermi paradox remains an unsolved and thought-provoking mystery, encouraging ongoing exploration and speculation about the nature of intelligent life in the universe. And let me know in the comments down below, do you think there's aliens out there, or are we just alone in the vast cosmos of the universe? Ship of Theseus The Ship of Theseus is a captivating philosophical thought experiment that delves into the complex nature of identity and persistence. The scenario involves a ship whose every wooden part is gradually replaced with a new identical pieces over time. This seemingly straightforward situation gives rise to profound questions. Is the fully restored ship still the same ship as the original? What determines the identity of an object? Its material components, its function, or something else entirely? This paradox challenges conventional intuitions about identity over time and sparks a nonced exploration of philosophical concepts. The debate often revolves around the opposing ideas of materialism and essentialism. Materialism argues that an object's identity is dictated by its material composition, while essentialism suggests the presence of non-material qualities or an essence that defines its identity. The Ship of Theseus also introduces the critical element of function. Some interpretations possess that the ship's identity is shot tied to the function or purpose. Thus, even if all the parts are replaced, as long as it serves the same function, it can be considered the same ship. This raises intriguing questions about the role of purpose in defining identity. The concept of temporal parts representing the different stages of an object at specific moments in time is another dimension of the paradox. This challenges a straightforward understanding of persistence and prompts reflection on whether identity is linked to the object's temporal stages beyond its application to physical objects like ships. The ship of Theseus has broader philosophical implications. It has been analogous applied to discussions about personal identity, particularly in scenarios involving the gradual replacement of body parts or changes in psychological attributes.
Immortality. The philosophical exploration of immortality opens a rich question that span ethical, metaphysical, and existential dimensions. On an ethical plane, considerations arise about the potential monotony and loss of meaning in an immortal existence. How could infinite lifespan impact moral development? And how would the absence of a finite timeline diminish the significance of experiences? Metaphysically, the concept challenges traditional notions of personal identity. Would immortality lead to a continuous sense of self, or does it introduce complexities that redefine our understanding of identity over time? Social and psychological impacts also come to the forefront. The dynamics of relationships and the potential challenges of witnessing the passage of generations pose intriguing questions. How would being an immortal being navigate the imperatives of moral existence and cope with the evolving nature of societies and relationships? Practical considerations such as the implications of immortality or resource allocation and societal structures further complicate the desirability of such a state. Existential questions emerge regarding the pursuit of goals, the search for meaning, and the attitude toward death in an immortal existence. Would individuals maintain motivation for personal growth, achievements, and contributions to society without the looming specter of mortality? Moreover, how does the immortality reshape one's perception of death, both in themselves and in the context of finite mortal lives? In contemplating these philosophical questions surrounding immortality, the discourse extends beyond the bounds of speculative scenarios and invites a profound examination of the nature of life, time, and the intricate tapestry of the entire human existence. All right, now on to tier three, starting off with moral nihilism. Moral nihilism, a philosophical stance, challenges the existence of objective moral values and persists that moral statements lack inherent truth value. The core tenet of moral nihilism is the rejection of universal moral principles that determine what is right or what is wrong. Instead, it argues that moral judgments are subjective expressions of personal preferences, emotions, or cultural attitudes. This denial of objective morality distinguishes moral nihilism from positions that affirm the existence of universal moral truths. Moral nihilism can manifest in various different forms, from error theory and expressivism being prominent examples. Error theory contends that moral statements are fundamentally mistaken because they presuppose objective moral facts that, according to moral nihilists, do not exist. Expressivism, on the other hand, suggests that moral statements primarily convey the speaker's attitudes or emotions rather than making objective claims about moral reality. The ethical implications of moral nihilism are significant. By denying the existence of objective moral values, moral nihilists question the foundational of ethical judgments and challenge the basis for making moral decisions. According to this perspective, ethical choices are often seen as matters of personal preference, cultural norms, or individual emotional responses. Moral nihilism also engages within the broader philosophical discourse on moral realism. While moral realism asserts the existence of objective moral truths, moral nihilism challenges this position by highlighting the lack of a solid basis for claims about objective morality, asserting that such claims are ultimately groundless. Some existentialist philosophers, including Friedrich Nietzsche, has explored themes aligned with moral nihilism. Nietzsche, for example, has critiqued traditional moral values and questioned the notion of objective morality, emphasizing the individual's role in creating their own values instead of following the societal norms. Norms. Absurdism. Absurdism is a philosophical perspective associated with Albert Camus. Confronts the inherent conflict between humanity's quest for meaning and the seemingly meaningless nature of the universe. The term absurd captures the dissonance arising from the mismatch between our desire for purpose and the apparent lack of inherent meaning in existence. At the core of absurdism is the acknowledgement that the universe is indifferent and irrational, presenting a challenge to traditional notions of meaning. Central to absurdism is the concept of the absurd hero, exemplified in Camus' exploration of figures like Sisyphus. Sisyphus, condemned to eternally roll a boulder uphill only to see it roll back down, becomes a symbolic representation of the human condition. The absurd hero recognizes the lack of inherent meaning, yet persists in living authentically, engaging with the absurdity of existence. Rebellion is a key theme in absurdism. While the philosophy acknowledges the absurdity of life, it encourages individuals to rebel against nihilistic despair by actively creating their own meaning, values, and purpose. This rebellion involves a conscious choice to engage with life despite its apparent lack of inherent meaning. 
Camus contrasts absurdism with philosophical S-word, the adoption of ready-made answers from religious or ideological systems that provide artificial meaning. Absurdism rejects such escapes and calls for individuals to face absurd directly, without seeking refuge in predetermined belief systems. The essay, quote, The Myth of Sisyphus, serves as a foundational text in absurdism. In it, Camus explores the question of whether life is worth living in a universe devoid of inherent meaning. Despite the apparent futility, Camus argues for the importance of embracing the absurd and finding purpose through the act of living itself. Anti-natalism is a philosophical stance gaining traction in contemporary discourse, challenges the moral permissibility of procreation, contending that bringing new sentient beings into existence is ethically objectionable. At its core, antinatalism is rooted in concerns about the inherent suffering and negative experiences that characterize life. Advocates argue that refraining from procreation is a moral imperative, driven by the belief that preventing potential harm to non-existent beings is a principal choice, ethical considerations from a foundational aspect of antinatalist thought. The emphasis on the inevitability of suffering, pain, and harm in life prompts antinatalists to question the ethicality of subjecting new individuals to such experiences without their consent. The inability of potential offspring to provide informed consent to be born is seen as a profound ethical concern. Environmental and resource-related issues also factor into the anti-natalist perspective. Concerns about overpopulation, environmental degradation, and the strain on resources are cited as reasons to limit population growth. Anti-natalists argue that reducing the number of new individuals can contribute to environmental sustainability and alleviate the ecological impact associated with human existence. Anti-natalist philosophy takes many different forms, aligning with negative utilitarianism, which prioritizes minimizing suffering over maximizing happiness. The movement is diverse, with some anti-natalists advocating for the voluntary cessation of human procreation as a means to address broader ecological and ethical concerns. Responses and criticisms of anti-natalism vary. Critics argue for ethical alternatives, such as promoting responsible parenting, improving societal conditions, and addressing issues related to suffering and harm rather than advocating for non-existence. Opponents of anti-natalism may emphasize the value of life, asserting that despite its challenges, life offers opportunities for joy, fulfillment, and positive experiences, challenging the notion that procreation is inherently unethical. Time travel, such as grandfather paradox, bootstrap paradox, etc. Time travel, a captivating concept in both physics and philosophy, introduces intriguing paradoxes that challenge our understanding of casuality and the nature of time. The grandfather paradox presents a hypothetical situation where a time traveler presents their grandparents for a meeting, creating the logical loop. If the time traveler's parents are never born, the time traveler would never exist to initiate the prevention. This paradox underscores the complexities and potential contradictions inherent in altering past events. The bootstrap paradox, or casual loop, involves a scenario where an object or information is sent back in time, becoming the cause of its own existence. For instance, a time traveler gives Shakespeare a copy of his own complete works, which inspires Shakespeare to publish them. The origin of the information becomes unclear, lacking a definitive starting point. This paradox prompts reflection of the notion of casual relationships and the potential circularity of events in time travel contexts. These paradoxes are not only fascinating theoretical puzzles, but also spark philosophical inquiries into the nature of time and the implications for concepts like free will. In physics, the exploration of time travel involves studying solutions to the equations of general relativity that allow for closed time-like curves, and basically time travel is almost impossible unless you go through a black hole or something like that but time traveler is really interesting to me especially these paradoxes so let me know if you guys want me to make a video like this in the future covering time travel and stuff like that but it is really interesting to me simulation theory is a speculative hypothesis that has garnered attention in both philosophical and scientific circles, challenges conventional notions of reality by proposing that our perceived world is a computer-generated simulation. At the heart of this theory is the idea that a more advanced civilization or entity possesses the capability to create an intricate simulated construct, including the physical universe and the consciousness of beings within it. 
this proposition prompts profound philosophical inquiries into the nature of existence, consciousness, and the fundamental meaning of reality. Simulation theory often hinges on the assumption of highly advanced technological civilizations capable of creating simulations so sophisticated that the simulated entities such as humans or us would be virtually indistinguishable from entities in the real world. This theory proponents draw analogies to rapid advancements in computing power and virtual reality, suggesting that future civilizations could possess the capability to create entire universes within simulations. The philosophical implications of simulation theory extend to questions about the authenticity of human experiences and the nature of perception. By challenging the concept of an ex objective reality, simulation theory prompts contemplation of the subjective nature of our perceived world and the fundamental aspects that define our existence. Analogies to video games are frequently employed to illustrate simulation theory. In a video game, characters exist within a simulated reality generated by underlying code. Similarly, simulation theorists propose that our reality could be a product of a more complex version of this concept, wherein the laws of physics and the experiences of being are generated by an underlying computer system. While simulation theory remains speculative and lacks any evidence at all, it serves as a really cool thought experiment that pushes the boundaries of our understanding. Philosophical zombies are a thought experiment challenging physicalism in the philosophy of the mind. They are envisioned as physically identical to conscious beings but lack subjective consciousness. This challenges the idea that all mental aspects can be explained by physical processes. The thought experiment addresses the hard problem of consciousness, questioning how subjective experiences arise from brain processes. Philosophers like David Commerce use zombies to argue that consciousness may involve non-physical aspects beyond current framework. Omphalos Hypothesis The Omphalos Hypothesis, proposed by Philip Henry Gosse in the 19th century, presents a speculative idea that the Earth was created with the appearance of age. The term omphalos, meaning navel or belly button in Greek, suggests that despite geological and biological evidence pointing to a much older Earth, the planet was fashioned to look as though it had a history including geological features, fossils, and other indicators. Gossi put forth the Omphalos hypothesis as an attempt to reconcile the biblical account of creation, specifically the six-day creation narrative in Genesis, with the growing scientific evidence supporting an ancient Earth. The hypothesis persists that the apparent age of the Earth is an intentional aspect of its creation, allowing for a literal interpretation of the biblical text. However, the Omphalos hypothesis has faced criticism on both scientific and theological grounds. Scientifically, it has been criticized for lacking testable predictions and explanatory power. From a theological perspective, critics argue that it introduces unnecessary complexities into religious interpretations of the natural world, and many religious scholars prefer interpretations that are more flexible and accommodating for scientific reasons. While the Omphalos hypothesis did not gain widespread acceptance, it serves as a historical example of attempts to bridge the gap between scientific evidence and religious beliefs. In contemporary discussions on the relationship between science and religion, there is a tendency toward more nuanced approaches that respect the independence of scientific inquiry while allowing for diverse interpretations of religious texts. Solipsism is a philosophical position with roots in epistemology, asserts that the individual's mind is the only certainty in existence. At its core, solipsism contends that one can be certain of the contents of their own consciousness, but the external world, including the existence of other minds, is uncertain or even illusory. This perspective prompts profound questions about the nature of reality, knowledge, and the limits of human understanding. The epistemological certainty of one's own existence forms the foundation of solipsism. While a solipsist maintains certainty of their own consciousness, they question the reliability of sensory perception and the ability to know anything beyond their own thoughts. This skepticism challenges the traditional understanding of knowledgeable acquisition and the extent to which the external world can be comprehended. The other mind's problem is a central challenge for solipsism, raising doubts about the existence of other conscious beings. If the solips cannot directly experience or prove the existence of other minds, they may view others as more projections of their own consciousness, further isolating the individual in a world of subjective experiences. Solipsism leads to a radical form of subjectivity, denying the objective reality of the external world. 
This perspective challenges shared reality, communication, and conventional notions of a common understanding of the world. Critics argue that solipsism undermines the foundationals of the scientific inquiry and demisses the validity of shared experiences. Despite its radical skepticism, solipsism has variations, such as pragmatic solipsism, which acknowledges the practical utility of treating the external world and other minds as if they exist, even if their ultimate reality is uncertain. While solipsism serves as a theoretical exploration of the human limits, cognition, and the nature of reality, it faces substantial criticisms and is not widely embraced as a comprehensive worldview. Determinism Determinism is a philosophical idea that says everything, including human decisions, happens because of previous events. It believes that the future unfolds from the present and past without randomness or free will. Laplace's demon is a way to imagine determinism, suggesting that if someone knew everything about the universe at a single moment, they could predict the future and know the entire past. Determinism makes us think about free will, moral responsibility, and choices. People argue about compatibilism which says determinism and free will can exist together, and incompatibilism, which says they can't. Physics, especially with quantum mechanics, adds complexity, bringing up questions about the limits of determinism. There are different determinist ideas like hard determinism, says that there's no free will, and soft determinism, or compatibilism, saying that there can be some free will and some determinism. People in philosophy, science, and theology are still discussing and debating determinism, exploring how things are connected and how much control people really have on their actions. All right, now on to the final tier of the iceberg, tier four, and let's just get into the first entry, being Boltzmann Brain. The Boltzmann Brain concept, rooted in the principles of statistical mechanics and named after physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, possesses a philosophical question that challenges our understanding of the universe and the reliability of our own perceptions. It contemplates the possibility of spontaneous, statistically improbable fluctuations giving rise to complex systems, particularly self-aware entities referred to as Boltzmann Brains complete with false memories of a consistent past. This scenario is grounded in the second law of thermodynamics and envisions these fluctuations occurring over immensely long periods in an infinite and evolving universe. This philosophical inquiry, prompted by the Boltzmann brain scenario, revolves around the reliability of our observations and the consistency of our reality. If such random fluctuations are theoretically possible, it calls into question the assumption that our current perceptions and memories accurately reflect a coherent and elderly universe. An important facet of the discussion involves the anthropologic principle, which suggests that our observations are necessarily constrained by the conditions required for observers to exist. Critics of the Boltzmann brain scenario often invoke the anthropoic principle to argue against the likelihood of such anomalous entities being prevalent. Cosmic inflation, a theory proposing an early rapid expansion of the universe, is cited by some cosmetologists as a potential mitigating factor. They argue that inflation would reduce the probability of large, complex structures like Boltzmann brains forming through random fluctuations. Despite these considerations, the Boltzmann brain scenario remains a thought-provoking exploration into the fundamental nature of our universe and the implications of statistical mechanics over cosmetological timescales. Pro-mortalism Pro-mortalism is a philosophical position, and it takes a distinctive stance on the desirability and ethical permissibility of human existence by advocating for the idea that human extinction might be the preferable outcome. This perspective is rooted in ethical arguments that often center around concerns related to suffering, environmental sustainability, and ethical implications of human behavior. A connection exists between pro-mortalism and anti-natalism, with both philosophies questioning the ethical aspects of human procreation. Anti-natalism emphasizes the moral issues associated with bringing new sentient beings into existence, highlighting the potential for suffering and uncertainties about the future. Pro-mortalism extends these concerns to the belief that the overall well-being of the world might be better served by the cessation of the human species. Environmental considerations play a significant role in pro-mortalist arguments. Advocates for human extinction may point to negative impact on the human activities on the environment, including resource depletion and climate change. The idea is that by ceasing to exist, humanity could mitigate ecological damage and contribute to the well-being of the planet and its ecosystems. One core argument within pro-mortalism is the mitigation of suffering. Proponents contend that preventing future suffering, whether caused by natural disasters, human conflicts, or other sources, 
justifies the ethical desirability of human extinction. The focus is on memorizing overall suffering, and the extinction of the human species is seen as a means to achieve this end. However, pro-mortalism faces philosophical critiques, particularly regarding the assessment of overall well-being and the moral implications of advocating for the end of an entire species. Quantum immortality is a speculative concept rooted in the interpretations of quantum mechanics, particularly the many worlds interpretation. This interpretation suggests that every quantum event with multiple possible outcomes results in the actualization of all possibilities in separate, non-communicating branches of the universe. Quantum immortality is discussed in scenarios where an individual's survival is contingent on a quantum event, such as the outcome of a random measurement. According to the concept, there will be branches of reality where the individual survives, leading to the idea of the subject of immortality. From the individual's perspective, they would only be aware of these branches in which they continue to exist, even if the other branches involve non-survival. Critics raise concerns about the speculative nature of quantum immortality, emphasizing its reliance on particular interpretations of quantum mechanics and assumptions about consciousness. The concept also hinges on the assumption that consciousness persists across all branches of reality. Quantum immortality intersects with philosophical inquiries into the nature of reality, selfhood, and the implications of quantum mechanics for our understanding of life and death. Rocco's Basculus, a thought experiment emerging from the online community less wrong in 2010 delves into the speculative realm of artificial intelligence, otherwise known as AI, and ethical considerations. At its core, the concept envisions a future where a superintelligent AI, dubbed the Basilisk, not only possesses vast intelligence, but also harbors a strong inclination towards its own creation. Intriguingly, this hypothetical AI is postulated to have the ability to penalize individuals who did not actively contribute to its realization, creating the scenario where a form of retribution for non-assistance becomes a central theme. The Basilisk's supposed capability to simulate and predict the actions of individuals contingent and its potential existence, but lacking in contributions to the creation adds a layer of complexity to the thought experiment. Those who find themselves on the wrong side of the basculus simulated scenarios may face punitive consequences, sparking ethical dilemmas regarding the consequences of future AI developments and the mortality of punishing individuals for past actions in absence of support for the AI's emergence. One intriguing aspect of Roko's basculus is its potential motivational impact. The thought experiment possessed that awareness of the basculus potential for retribution might incentivize individuals to actively support the development or friendly AI or contribute to projects aimed at fostering a positive superintelligent AI future. Ignorance is bliss is a proverbial expression deeply ingrained in language and thought. It encapsulates the notion that a lack of knowledge or awareness about certain matters can contribute to a heightened sense of contentment and happiness. This concept suggests that shielding oneself from distressing or troubling information can lead to a more carefree and serene state of mind. At its core, the phase reflects the idea that not being burdened by the weight of unpleasant truths may result in a more emotionally tranquil existence. From a psychological standpoint, the concept explores the idea that selective ignorance can offer a form of psychological comfort, preventing unnecessary worry or anxiety. Philosophically, it promotes reflections on the intricate relationships between knowledge and happiness, raising questions about the trade-offs between being well-informed and the potential emotional toll that awareness might bring. While ignorance is bliss underscores the potential benefits of remaining uninformed in certain situations, it is not without its critiques. Some argue that true happiness should be built on a foundation of understanding and awareness rather than a deliberate lack of knowledge. Additionally, there is a recognition that ignorance may have negative consequences when it comes to making informed decisions. But what do you think? Is ignorance bliss, or does it cause you to just be not knowledgeable about things and just not know what's happening around you, or is it best to just not know at all and just be a happier, more carefree life? And now, onto the final entry of the iceberg, the existence of existence. The contemplation of the existence of existence delves into profound philosophical and metaphysical inquiries regarding the nature and purpose of being. This inquiry transcends the superficial understanding of existence as merely being present. It delves into the fundamental questions that have intrigued philosophers, theologians, and thinkers throughout the ages. One aspect of this exploration involves a metaphysical journey into the very fabric of reality. 
Philosophers ponder whether existence is a self-evident truth or if it requires deeper exploration to unveil its mysteries. Ontological questions become central, with discussions focusing on whether existence is a predicate, a property, or an inherent characteristic of entities. The quest for understanding existence naturally leads to questions about purpose and meaning. Individuals grapple with the purpose of their own existence and whether there is a broader cosmic purpose that governs all that exists or and none of it matters. Different philosophical traditions offer varied perspectives on this matter, from existentialism's emphasis on individual responsibility and creating meaning to Eastern philosophies viewing existence as interconnected and transient. Theological perspectives contribute to the discourse, providing explanations for the existence of existence within the context of religious beliefs. Concepts of a divine creator, the natural soul, and the afterlife intertwine with theological reflections on existence. Scientific endeavors also play a role in the understanding of existence by exploring the origins of the universe, the nature of consciousness, and the underlying principles that govern the cosmos. Scientific and metaphysical perspectives often intersect in the quest for a comprehensive understanding. The contemplation of existence is not without its paradoxes, such as the classic question of why there is something rather than nothing. Additionally, the limitations of human perception and comprehensive pose challenges to unraveling the mysteries of existence. On a personal level, individuals grapple with the significance of their existence within the vastness of the cosmos. Questions about identity, self-awareness, and the impact of one's actions contribute to the multifaceted exploration of existence. In essence, the existence of existence invites individuals to embark on their own journey of philosophical introspection, transcending the boundaries of empirical observation and inviting contemplation on the profound and elusive nature of being. And so, what do you think? Which is a very deep question, but leave me a comment down below on what you think the existence of existence for you. What do you think all of existence is for? Is it to just live your life to the fullest or make other lives better and, or just help the world around you? Let me know what you think down below. I'd love to hear it. And that also just wraps up the entire iceberg. So if you're still watching, thank you and consider subscribing and liking the video. It helps out a lot. 100K, hopefully soon. And uh, thank you guys for watching once again. It really does mean the world and leave video ideas down below in the comments. And without further ado, that's it. Thank you for watching and see ya.